In September 2012, an excavation took place in Leicester at the site of where people thought the Greyfriars Friary was to find the remains of Richard III. The excavation did find parts of the friary and it found some skeletons and one of them in particular was very interesting because they noticed he had a spinal deformity and we know that Richard III from historical sources is said to have had a spinal deformity. When his remains were excavated in the ground, we could see the upper spine and lower spine were nice and straight and in a symmetric alignment, but the middle part of the spine in the thoracic region was curved to the right, and the bones were also in a slight spiral configuration. After excavating those bones, we could also see that there were subtle changes throughout the curve, which showed that this had been present during his life. The bones were slightly asymmetric, and also there was degenerative change in some of the joints in the spine uh, which would have suggested there were abnormal forces passing through those. So all those fit together with the fact that he did genuinely have a scoliosis during life. When we saw Richard's body in the ground we can only see the curve in two dimensions. So we use latest technology to scan his bones, to recreate every bone using 3D polymers and then put them all back together again in a three-dimensional way so that we can walk round it, we can look at it from above, and we can understand exactly what this deformity was like. From looking at the 3D model, we can see that we have the classic spiral shape of a scoliosis that children get from adolescent onset idiopathic scoliosis. This is the kind that people get when they hit their adolescent growth spurt and their spine growing really fast, and if they can't quite control growth well enough, they can spiral off into a deformity in their back. We know that this scoliosis would have made his trunk a little bit shorter compared with his limbs than if he hadn't had that deformity. But his movements would have otherwise been fairly similar, so he should have still been able to do physical activities that one might expect a noble of the time to do. Now, perhaps the most famous and well-known description of Richard III is by Shakespeare. What we see is he's described as having a limp, a withered arm, a hunchback, but of course, when we look at the remains, he doesn't have those features. So we can see here an element of Tudor spin to defame rulers from the previous ruling family to make the Tudors look better. If Richard had lived today, his scoliosis would have been picked up as he went through his adolescence. And then with his degree of curve, it's highly likely he'd have had an operation to put some rods in his back, straighten out his spine, and then he would have had much less of a problem with his spinal deformity.